We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em. Remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. Would you like to work closer to home, save money on gas, and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance? Then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on-site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at Beliciofoods.com slash careers. I got it. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning show right here on Main Street TV. Of course, Jennifer here to start off your Thursday morning and with some rain in the forecast, unfortunately, because we're all tired of that. But here it is, uh, nonetheless. But I am here with our good friends, the Larry. And the crowd goes wild. Woo! Yeah, yeah. The Larrys are here, and welcome to the program. Welcome back to the program. Well, thank you for having thank us. Thank you, yeah. Of course, it's always so fun to have you guys here. And this year, you brought show and tell, which is even more fun. Woo! Yeah. yeah. So we're going to throw um, axes at people, and do we get Probably a better not do that. <laughs> Look out, Dylan. Here it comes. He doesn't think I'm serious. Wait till it ends up in the drywall over there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, no, the Larrys are here to talk about something really, really cool uh, going on this weekend at Candor's Cave. So, Absolutely. I guess tell everybody who you are, first off. Well, I'm Larry Harris. I'm Larry Zorns. This is why they're called the Larrys, because it's Larry and, and Larry. And brother Larry. Yes, and their <laughs> brother Daryl didn't come. <laughs> But, uh, no, so you guys have some fun things going on this weekend. Yeah, we got the uh, pre-1890 indoor trade fair going on, uh, time period from 1700 through 1890, and got, what, 27, 28 dealers that can be set up and uh, all in period attire. Uh, right. Uh, the... Uh, the gate receipts, 100% of those go to the 4-H camp, and we donate uh, a percentage of our table fare to the 4-H camp, too, for the kids, donate to uh, help the kids uh, with whatever. You know, and this, that's why this thing is so cool. I mean, it's so cool on its own, but you guys have made sure over the years that um, some of the proceeds and, and whatnot of this trade fair, and you've been doing it for how long now? 25. 25 years. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So in 25 years, you all have made sure that um, the 4-H camp is the recipient and the kids yep. are the recipient of some of the benefits yep. of, of your trade fair. And I think that's Absolutely. so awesome. Mm -hmm. The kids deserve it. And 4-H is so awesome. And, and, yeah, and our club, you know, Sons of Liberty, is a nonprofit organization. So, you know, the only th we keep enough money to put on a rendezvous in, uh, in the summertime. And that's it. Yeah, and the rest can go to the kids or, yeah. or whatever, helping yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah, love that. Canner's Cave, Larry, you this Larry, you would know that. How long has Canner's Cave been in existence? Oh, uh, it started in 1949. That's a few years ago. Yeah, and I think he was there, the first one. <laughs> I may have been there close. Did you ride yeah. your pony about there? 70, <laughs> <laughs> I have out there. I have ridden horses out there. but uh, I think they had sheep back then. It's a... Uh, <laughs> But uh, I, I went by when I was about 10 years old, so that would have been 70 years ago. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I was in the 4-H for, for years, so uh, we had fun. Yeah. You know, I, I think that that's one of the best things about 4-H is I think back about, like, my childhood. And I was in 4-H all the years that they would let me. They finally had to kick me out because I, you know, got too old. But uh you know, you think back about the memories that you you made and the people that you met that you would have never met otherwise Absolutely. and the experiences that you have that you would have never had otherwise. And 
Um, I just can't think of anything bad about 4-H. It's wonderful. No, yeah. Yeah, I've yeah, met yeah. the best friends of my whole life. It's all been through 4-H, really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Lifelong friends. Absolutely. Yep. And you've uh, y'all y'all have been around the camp quite a bit, so mm -hmm. uh, you've been out there as well. So well, I've lived there for about twenty two years. Yeah, a yeah, few years. Lived there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, are you still living out there? Or no, no, no. no. no you moved no, out I live in Chickalothe now. Chick a what a what a Chickalothe. Oh, yeah. Chilaga. <laughs> Ch so I have a funny story about that. <laughs> okay. So um, I think I've told this before, but I was in a you know I went to Capital University, and all the classes mm -hmm. were fairly small. Mm -hmm. But I got put into this like evening class, and it was one of those where it was like huge, like hundreds of people in it. And so the first day, I'm sitting beside this girl, and we're talking. She's like, "Hey, I'm from Chillicothe," and I was like, "Oh, I'm from Jackson. How cool, you know?" And we hit it off, and we were talking. And <laughs> so the, the professor um, made us go around and say where we were from, and she said, "You know." My name is blah, 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 and I'm from Chillicothe, Ohio. <laughs> and I was like dying, and no one else yeah. got it. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it was pretty funny. That's my whole story. Well, yeah. well, but the, I was like. <laughs> the Indian name for it is Chilagatha. Chilagatha? Chilagatha, yeah. Shawnee. Like There's all kind of things we can call it, huh? Yeah. The first Absolutely. capital. I know. And I'm like, you know, we're 30 miles south of, of Chillicothe. You know, you try to tell people where you live, and they're like, mm -hmm. I'm like, first capital of Ohio. Right. <laughs> what? Hmm. Like, yeah. did you not have Ohio history in the eighth grade? Like, <laughs> I don't know if they're teaching history or not in school. I don't know what they're teaching. Not much. I, know. I don't think very much. I don't know what they teach. But anyway, so anyway, we digress. But um, so you all are doing your trade fair this weekend mm. out at Canner's Cave. And tell, every, tell us a little bit about it. Go ahead. A little bit about it. Well, I mean, is it inside? So it, we don't. Well, it's going to be inside. Main lot. Main lot. <laughs> and if we've been living right, I guess <laughs> this could be the first year we haven't had snow of some sort. Maybe, guys, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I swear. Usually, it's yeah. You know, we've got the shovels out most every of the time. year, and, and not yeah. only snow, but like ice and and Absolutely, bitter yeah. cold, and it's. You but guys the, always so, get it. Yeah, the thing about it, though, is it seems like the more it snowed, the more people we got in. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, the more they came Well, they wanted out. to get out of the cold. Yeah, they're yeah. like, forget it. Yeah. I'm not staying home in this junk. Yeah, yeah, yeah we so. got they have the cafeteria there, so, you know, people uh -huh. can come and spend the day. Uh, and if they would like to spend the weekend, they can talk to Elisa. She's a camp director out there. And rent a room at the, at the dorm. Uh, okay. So, uh and you know, and we've got what, 28 dealers set up, yeah, and uh, covering the time period from 1700 through 1890, and all are required to be in period dress, which they are, and they they, they enjoy it, yeah. And uh, uh, I don't know, I'm running out of things to say. Go ahead. Oh no, that's fine. So <laughs> we have some pictures to show. So there you go. Yeah. You want to explain oh, those? Oh, wow, look at that. Okay. Yeah, we're fancy now, Larry. Oh, I didn't. Wow, okay. You didn't know. That's great. No. Oh, you were here That's last year, picture. were you? I was not. Yeah, see, you missed. Or was? Oh, I don't remember. Pictures right there. Oh, I guess, guess that was me. Oh, I, oh, yeah, there, yeah. No, he was. Oh, wait, yeah, I know. Oh, were you here? Yeah, okay. Oh, my are. goodness yeah. gracious. <laughs> look at that. Okay. There we are. Okay. Well, yeah. anyway. Back to the wooden bowls. Back to the wooden bowls. All right, tell us what we're looking at. Wooden bowls. Yeah, wooden bowls. Yeah, right? <laughs> I used to like you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, well, I guess that'd be dinnerware of the time for some. But Well, yeah, I don't know why he got uh, – who I can't think who he is. I don't know who that is. Yeah, some of the guys we don't know. Okay, that's totally fine because they come from all over well, the place. They come yeah, from right. all over. And, we yeah. always, and this year I think we've got three or four new ones that haven't been there. So. Oh, yeah. cool. Looks like he's got a pack basket there and uh, – like these here, and uh, some uh, look like uh, wooden wooden buckets. So in that time period, so you're talking about an almost 200 year time period yeah, that, yeah. that you know we're it, covering here. Yeah. So in that time period, would people have eaten out of wooden bowls or ceramic Quite. or steel or all of the above? All, all of the it. above. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They would Copper. eat off of leaves if they could find a magnolia tree big enough. I gotcha. So, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, Dylan. You have any more pictures for us? Uh, so the wooden the wooden yeah, bowls. Yeah, yeah. That's Jeff Gear. 
of J Gear Hornworks oh, gear, okay. and Turnery, gear, okay. and they're based out of West Liberty, Ohio. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Cool. That's uh, myself and uh, Jason Gatliff. He is the owner, editor, publisher of the Muzzleloader magazine. It's a really neat magazine. It's a bi-monthly magazine. Okay. And uh, he bought it from uh, uh, people down in Texas, and uh, he he moved it up to Tennessee. And it's a, it's a nice, a really nice magazine uh, that comes out. Okay. It tells you all about muzzle loaders. Oh, yeah, stories, stories, and stories, stuff. And, stories, and, yeah, stuff. stuff. and stuff. advertisement. Yeah. I advertise in it. There's a lot of people advertising it. Okay. So, uh, all right. Very good. That's, uh, that's Liza Kendig. She is the owner-operator of third generation of the Log Cabin Shop out of Lodi, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And that's Jason Gatliff again. Uh, he's holding up a copy of the Mother Loader magazine. Okay. And what and is the Log Cabin Shop? What is it? What did, Yeah, what do they say? They're they sell lo- things they or sell build them? They, got a mu- like your, they like have a museum. Right oh, okay. They've yeah. got a museum. They've got mm-hmm. a firing range. They have a trade fair of their own. And cool. uh, they, they just have a, a, a store, a general merchandise, uh, muzzle loading stuff. Okay. You know? Stuff. Uh, See? Stuff. Yeah. Stuff's the More word stuff of the day. Yeah, yeah, well, there's a, lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of things in the muzzle loading. You can just refer to it as stuff. But, uh, <laughs> and if you're looking for early American, like, history, uh, research, like in books, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, not the yeah. internet. Yeah. Um, in books, uh, yeah, she, Liza has a, quite a library that she brings yeah, with her. Hundreds, but wait, hundreds of books. If you read it on the internet, it's true. Didn't uh, you know that? I've heard that. Yeah, right. I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. But they All also right. have the modern stuff. They have DVDs and that kind of thing for the no, that's awesome. more technology advanced people. But yeah, yeah very books good. are still the way to go. Yeah, no, I agree. All right, okay. so there's Larry. Hey, uh, that Larry. Right. That Larry. Uh, this Larry. I got uh, the VA rep from Pike County is coming over. He's wanting to buy a kit for his son to put together eventually. So I told him come to trade fair, and uh, well, what's a kit? A kit. A what kit. is it? What is it? They don't know what it's that all is. the parts and pieces to build a gun. There you go. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. And he wanted a, one of these axes, and then them he had, said, "How much are them going to cost me?" I said, "Nothing." So uh, I, I, I got a big heart for that guy. Yeah, he he he's helped me a lot. Well, let's see, amazing. let's see one of them axes. Larry, yeah, let's see. One. They can't see it. Though. Look out, Dylan! Here it comes. This is a duck. Vir- this is a Virginia axe. It was a copy. I call it Virginia axe. The uh, we copied it from a. One that was found in the walls of a 1750 fortified house in Virginia. Oh wow! And we copied that, and then this is a one of, mm-hmm. Fort, uh, from Fort Meigs, Ohio. Fort Meigs axe. So what? Uh, they're obviously different looking, right? Oh, yeah. So what would be the reason that they look different? Well, that would be for a builder. Okay. So, you know, if you're uh, building something, uh, making something. You know, you have a you have a hammerhead basically on there besides the axe. So. Oh yeah, I see that. So yeah. you can use that for yeah. hammering well, and so this building is building furniture or whatever. whatever obviously, wood handle and then yeah, it's a hickory. That's a hickory. Wood. Hickory and then you know this was made by a blacksmith. I'm assuming or yeah, so it, been, it would have been iron originally. Worker. Or, or cast now. They're and then cast the, steel, the but. thing goes actually up through the. The top the eye of wedge. The, the eye mm-hmm. of the axe, and mm-hmm. then we use Osage Orange wedges to, to make sure that they that they stay in place. So this one is for a builder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it also throws very good. All right, <laughs> yeah, look it's out, It's a really Dylan. good throwing axe. It's, I guess now is it's kind of a big thing. People pay, it is a huge thing. People pay big dollars to take yeah, one of these and throw it. we used to do it. that to have fun. We I still know. do it to have well, fun. We, yeah, you know. we still do it, but we'll get in a, a handle chopping contest. Somebody will throw and stick it, and then another guy tries to cut that guy's handle. I said, go ahead. That's nice. I got more handles for sale. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I hope you I hope you succeed. And a, and a camp, for shooting ed camp, we, we have a contest where the kids yeah. learn to throw those. And, I want to learn we, to throw And we, an we favor this one. It does throw better than this type of That guy. seems kind of light. Well, it is, but it'll stick. I mean, okay. it's just yeah, a little yeah. harder to, to get it to, just because of the way the weight is in it. But yeah. Okay, so this is for, you know, a builder or whatever. So yeah, talk about building. 
This one. That's a copy from one that was found at Fort Meigs, Ohio, probably around 1812, somewhere in that neighborhood. It's generally a, a camp axe, yeah. if you will. So a it's, camp axe. Yeah, yeah, so for chopping kindling and that kind of a thing. It also has a hammerhead on it to, to use if you need to, well, like, little you one. Know, yeah. to, uh, to blunt items and that kind of stuff. If you're but, like uh, Billy, you chop digits off with them, too. <laughs> well, you, oh, yeah. You can do that, too. Yeah, they're, they're actually very sharp, so, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to take Hickory handle, same, same type of thing. Awesome. That's a pipe hawk. Okay, it's, now that one uh, looks different. It's yeah. a smoker. That was a, that, a water water? That, it's that, a smoker. That was the, the rig, and, you know, bury the hatchet, and then and the peace pipe yeah. is showing. Yeah. Put tobacco in there. Well, whatever they had in the time, whatever that is. What? And, is uh, tobacco really what people are putting I in this? I don't know. I don't know. I've never done that. Can't connect. I can't tell you, but, uh, yeah, but that's Wait. what it is. So Isn't it's an cool? axe yeah. that doubles as something that you can. It's your smoke. They, they smoke they, no they, way. They yes, smoked that. They, they, they did that when they were talking peace, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, like a peace pipe, but they usually, that's a ceremonial. Yeah, the calumet. Yeah. Okay, I have Big to see this. Oh, absolutely. It's very light. I don't know. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I assume there's a hole in here. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's got and then there. there's a hole here and a hole there. All the way through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you smoke the pipe. Uh -huh. Smoke the pipe, man. Or you can use it as an axe. Or you can yeah. use it as an axe, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, yeah, stuff goes in there. The stuff, yeah. whatever stuff yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, I make one without the pipe bowl, just like that, but without the pipe bowl, and people use it like an ulu. They can skin with it and mm -hmm. chop with it, and it works really good. Okay, I got it. It's almost That's a not sharp. That's not sharp. That's, I didn't hasn't sharpen been finished. it. That's, that's okay. totally unfinished. I have never heard of such a thing. Mm, yeah. Pipe tomahawk. There you go. History, so the, history, there you being, go, repeat, history being repeated. That's awesome. So would this be um, would this be for sale out yeah. this yeah. weekend somewhere? There's one in the, uh, I guess, in the museum at Chillicothe, very similar to that. Supposedly belonged to Tecumseh. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's kind of neat. All right. Very good. And this one, see, this is here set up. You can buy this. It'd be like a, a, a Zorn's kit, if you will, and then you finish this. You finish. Yeah. It. Oh. It, it just, that's that's in the be... raw right there. It's just the way they. So how? What would you do to finish it? Well, Paint you, it, seal it. Yeah, sand it down. Finish the handle really, really well, and then you could do a lot of metal work up here too. You can okay. engrave, engrave the metal. And if, you were, if, if you were, if you yeah, if you had, had the skills the to do that, stuff to do it, or you can get one of those books from Wise and learn how to do it. Oh, cool. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Love it. Buy the tools and all that. More tools. More stuff. You got to have more stuff. <laughs> more stuff. More stuff. Yeah, more that stuff. That is awesome. So, it, what? okay, back to the, this because this is interesting. Yeah. What would the peace pipe be? That was was it between the Native Americans and the and, and settlers? All and the all white eye, yeah. What all are they trying to do? Just let's all get together and yeah. try to get along. Yeah. Let's trade and get get along. That's right. I um so I was yeah. telling you guys I just got done watching 1883 and um, hmm. I mm -hmm. I was hoping that one of you guys had seen it to see how accurate it really you I know haven't, is. I haven't seen it. Um, yeah, I've seen the commercial. I haven't because I haven't seen it. I don't have that channel. Yeah, so. it's a prequel to Yellowstone, but yeah. it's set in obviously in 1883. So you know, Yellowstone's set in modern times. Yeah, and then there's one that's like 1923 that just came out. So they're they're basically establishing the family tree. Yeah, and explaining. Okay. So it's progressive as time goes on. And yes. You, the family, there's a family that starts. and Yeah, so like. You stay with the same family? Through yes. The oh, so gotcha. Yellowstone uh, okay. is okay. the Dutton family. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So 1883 is like uh, Tim McGraw, Faith Hill, whatever. They would be John Dutton that's in Yellowstone's like great, yeah, great, great, great are, grandparents yes. or yeah. something. And then yeah. their son is his great grand father but he's just a little boy in this yeah. show yeah, yeah so it's just it's kind of neat well, this is a great promotion for their show it is jay Absolutely. pulled up the um yeah. so you can actually look at the family tree online and it's like because huh. it, it's like yeah how do you, how do all these people piece no, together is this but, supposed to be historic where it's is it real i mean real family or is it just all no. A bunch of writers in Hollywood. Kind but, of no, well, Taylor Sheridan, who wrote Yellowstone, who is actually, you know, a rancher and, and does all of this and has hit gold with this crazy show, of course. Um, yeah. started this 
wrote this as well and directed it, but um, it's not per se about an actual family, but he is coming up with an 1883 sequel that is about an actual person. Okay. So the sequel to 1883 is actually not the same characters. It's yeah. it's about an actual person that did exist. And and, and the, this is portrayed out west though. Like Yeah, or, so in um they're starting in like a little different culture than what we're we're in the east. You know, correct. A little different midwest if you will. Yeah, so they started out they were headed to Oregon mm -hmm. in in the sh show. Um, and then it's the trials and tribulations of that. Um, Can't get them wagons over the mountain to Oregon. <laughs> well, some of them got to Oregon. Uh, some of them stayed put in. Some of them made um, it to Donner Pass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some of them yeah. made it to Wyoming uh, or Montana. And that's and it, this is the story about how they ended up in Montana and didn't get to okay. Oregon. That kind of stuff. I so. lived there for a couple of years, Montana. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Worked Very for Sharon good. Rifle Barrel Company up there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Up by, look out my kitchen window, looking right into Glacier National Park. There you go. That wouldn't suck. <laughs> yeah, but the snow gets well, kind of deep of after a while. I would say it gets real deep over there. <laughs> Level with the top strand of a five star, five strand barbed wire fence. And that's how deep we got where we were at. Oh wow! Yeah. It so was, let's talk for a minute about like what you saw, what you would see from the west versus you said the east. How would people well, be different? Well, mainly, of course, what their their clothing, what they'd be wearing, would be a big deal. Because I was going to say, what you guys have on is not what it's Eastern, mostly Eastern, early Eastern. Stuff. Okay. Right. Yeah, Western stuff was a little different. Uh, uh, of course, the mountain men. I don't know if he's saying that they they would probably be, they'd wear a little bit of everything, really. Mm -hmm. They'd have wool, more and, of it. Yeah, wool. More and, of it. Wool was a real popular commodity. And uh, uh, capotes, they called them, uh, made out of uh, Hudson Bay blankets. Okay. And you would bring things from the east, of course, because you you came from the east. So you would trade moving or... west. You know, everybody started from the east and yeah, west, moved west. Kind of a thing. Way of west. Yeah. yeah, there's not much history about people that come in on the west coast and went anywhere other than where they were at. Correct. You know? but, well, the thing that I thought was so fascinating is like they just claimed a land. Absolutely. You just, well, that's, that's what the, piece of land do you want? I'm going to stake yeah, a stake in the ground, and that's mine. Yeah, let's take that out. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. wild. Then it was legal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you so. probably can't see this stuff, but you would have okay. had. That's probably too small. To James really, can show it. Really there. see it. But but that there is, of course, a fire starting this, kit. This, yeah, it's all fire starting type stuff. So that in that, that black looking stuff you see is actually cloth. It's char been cloth. Down. It's called char cloth. Oh, and that's they would, okay. They would burn that down in a in a tin like this with holes in it. And you'd burn that down where the you know where this material be a linen material. It's Can a, I feel it's it? A char oh, absolutely. It's, it'll blacken your finger though. Oh, it is. It's just fabric. Like, it's just it's fabric light. that you I would burn it down. Be like and it would be waste. It would be waste fabric. Okay. That you would to carry with you at all times. And then, of course, you have the old trusty flint and steel because flint we didn't steel, have matches and Bic lighters and all that back in the day. So right. you would lay some of this out and then some of this this stuff right here to get a fire started. You know, you'd strike this and strike a spark. Which I it in here. When I you catch really, a spark, really you can't. put it in a you know, there we got a little bit you of need, spark. You you're never gonna see you it need on a TV. new piece of flint. I know, but that's all I had. Okay. So, and then you carry the steel like So this. that's how you they got the spark to start. Absolutely. The fire. Down on the you'd lay the char cloth out here somewhere. Where you could get to it, and you get a once you get some flint sparks on there, it, that stuff will light right up. Yeah, and then tender, you had this yeah, to cut your wood. Yeah, you have a tender right? bundle. <laughs> there you go, little tiny pieces in. of wood. Yes, you're right. And okay. Then, and definitely, you wouldn't go anywhere without that. East, west, anywhere. You okay. would never go anywhere without yeah. something of that sort. Of course, you'd be a rich guy if you had this tin and all that kind of stuff like I got. You know, oh, that, really? Yeah, that you'd be real well off carrying on in this in this way. But you got to keep this dry. That's the biggest deal is keeping this dry, and your kindling has to be dry and all that. Sure. Get the fire started. Yeah. And then that you'd is carry so these cool. Little, I talked about these before. I think last year we talked about possibles, bags, and all that. Yes. So these are mostly deer skin type of stuff, deer hide, that you make bags out of to put things yeah, like that in. A it. bag with a flap. It's just right. a storage bag, basically. Yeah, basically it is, it. and it's also designed to keep sound down because you, in that period, you wouldn't want to be walking around making noise. Because, first of all, you're going to alert all the animals that you might be hunting sure. for. 
And you're going to alert other people. Yes. You know, and so you want to be quiet. Well, and that was something that, I mean, I'm just going off this show. That I, it's, it was just fun. But, um, yeah, there were all kind of, for lack of better words, pirates, not a, a right word. But, you know, well. they were just men out stealing cattle and, you know, robbing right. folks and uh, what are bandits, I guess they would be. They would be bandits, I so guess, but you would want to be very, very quiet so as to not mm -hmm. let them know where you were. That'd be the hope. Yeah, that would be the hope. Okay. What else you we want? Got, you guys got. They have so much show we, and tell. Brought, this is so got fun. Enough stuff to go for. That's, That's hunting, hunting pouch. Hunting pouch. And uh, yeah, you know, you keep all your bullet molds and your, your bullets and patches and everything in there and then you'd have your horn carry your horn to carry your powder in and we use flintlock so every once in a while you got to brush the pan out now this one i made out of a gator tooth and some porcupine hair oh and, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> It a worked. gator tooth and well, porcupine it's attached, hair. Yeah. It's attached. I know yes. she wants to see it, so that's well, why I'm trying to. Yeah. Well, she she wants to see that. It of course won't. I have to see I had to touch yeah. everything. It's yeah, my ADHD yeah, yeah. coming out. There you go. Well, gators have big teeth. Yes, they do. Matt, I don't know if you can show that on the camera, if they're close or not. I don't know. People probably want to see that. That's really cool. There'll be a big increase on gator teeth sales. Now, now <laughs> down here we in go. Louisiana. Yeah, down in yeah. Louisiana. Them. Yeah, they'll be looking for them gator teeth from the swamp people. So, <laughs> so yeah. that is to um, you know brush off the flint. Brush your mm -hmm. pan out, clean yeah. your pan out, right. and your flint lock. And then look how pretty the. So did someone make that like satchel or? I, yeah. would, I don't want to the call it a pouch. purse bag honey, pouch. Honey pouch. Yeah. Uh, I forget who made this one. That is beautiful. Yeah. Like, I want to use that as a purse. <laughs> well, do, yeah. do what? She wants that as so, a purse. Well. Yeah, so you can, you know, you can, yeah. You could use it as a purse, I suppose. Could, yeah. <laughs> you could. Why as long as you? my iPhone fits in it, we're fine. <laughs> well, that's what, well, I, don't, I didn't bring mine, but yeah, that's, you can put that in here. Yeah. So this this is go. a poor man's, so same thing. It's, it's a smaller, a, but it's a hunting pouch. Yeah, okay. Same way you carry all your stuff in there. Very cool. So you have that and that. Well, and then a part of that, and you got, of course, Larry talked about the horns and all, but that brush that you would clean out, that he's talking about cleaning this out right here. Yeah, this, brush this brush out right it here. out. This is called the pan right here. Okay. And then you have a vent pick. I don't know if I'm allowed to use the old term. So Go I'll ahead. Call, vent I'll call pick. it a vent, vent pick. It is a vent pick. Yeah. Man, I'll see that little <clears throat> hole right there. You got to just make sure it's cleaned out. Keep Good, that yeah. Clean okay. Because that's where your fire goes from the flint striking the frizzing inside there. Okay. So you have to keep that clean, and you have a little brush to brush that old junk out, out, of, out there. of there. Okay, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And then when you run out of powder, <laughs> you, you resort to this. Right. This is like crocodile Dundee. That's not a knife. That's, that's a knife. knife. That's a knife. Holy! M okay, this is like Game of Thrones stuff right here. Well, yeah, it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this is so heavy. Yep, I is made that uh, probably thirty years ago. I forged that out of a file, and I just kind of developed it as I went to handle and all. A it's rasp. sharp, a hoof rasp, horse. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you don't throw anything away. Find a use for it. So this would be used as a backup. That's protection. That's a backup. So you whip this sucker out of someone or something's coming that, at you. Yeah, and they you, don't, you know, and make them stop and think. I would say so. <coughs> this thing is scary. Yeah, you certainly wouldn't want this in no. side anything on your body. No. Yeah. But, you know, you it's have to, you have so to consider heavy. how heavy this thing is, and you're carrying all this other gear. That's what I'm thinking. Like, you know, my you, gosh. Yeah, you know, so. That is awesome. But it's a, it's a, I don't know if you can hear the ring or not. Yeah. Oh, what's the, this You don't is have pretty. a scabbard for it. Well, that's a dirk, but it's. Oh, well, that's a Damascus steel blade. Too. Scottish dirk. Yeah. yeah, Scottish dirk. You probably <coughs> can't see it on camera, but. 
those are many, many pieces of steel. It's Damascus steel. That's layered forged together. Layered together layers and forge welded together. Is this how you pass real, it? Because it's that real pretty design yeah. in the in the steel. Look how pretty so. that is. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. And it's pretty razor sharp, too. So. Yeah. Don't cut your finger off, James. It is sharp. So why is there... <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Why is there... There's like a groove at the top of that. Why is it just the way that it... Where, here? Or this? Yeah, that. It's just a blood groove. A blood groove. Yeah. Oh, uh, just let the blood let out. The blood out. <laughs> it's a... Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying oh for. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. Look at knives in history. You'll find that on a blood knives. groove. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And I noticed that there's like notches at the end of that. Is that so that, Decor is that decorative? Oh, it's decorative. <laughs> yeah, I knew, yeah, right. I knew that was it's like common. teardrops yeah. in prison, like putting right? Putting a notch on a gun or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. This is uh, oh, it's just this decorative. is carved out of walnut, and these are ivory caps. This is okay. ivory and ivory here. Uh, it's a it's a very nicely done dirk. It's pretty. Yeah. Very pretty. All right. So you probably don't yeah. want to carry that into Walmart though or anything. No, I don't think so. They probably, probably all panic. Upon. They'd panic. <laughs> <laughs> or that. Set the, set the alarm off, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And well, y'all were worried about wearing masks. This is a 1730 uh, French trade pistol. Okay. And uh so how does that work exactly? How does it work? Sorry. Powder goes into the pan. Cock it. Powder goes into the pan. And I don't have a flint in it, but to come back. And then, then you pull the trigger. The flint strikes the frizzin. It puts sparks in the pan, and it ignites the main charge and goes and in the, that. Goes in that. So does a, that has a bullet in it? Right. Yeah. So yeah. is it one at a time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's one at a time. So. That's why you have the knife, right? <laughs> yeah. That's why you have the You got to have a backup. You got to have two of these and one of those. I guess you, you got to have shots. a backup. Okay. Gotcha. You know, however, you, however you want to look at it. Yeah. But, but yeah, to load it. So, powder, you got to have a powder, and that would come out, yeah. out of a horn like this. The yeah, main, so main would charge would be out of this. In the barrel. And this would be your yeah. priming, priming yeah. horn, the powder that goes in the pan. Right. Okay. You, you would take this horn. That horn, and you would dump it into this. Okay. Okay, and this this is actually um, river cane from Ohio. Sure. That we made, and you make a so you you have to a experiment with the charge, a powder measure. You have to experiment with to get the right charge in the gun. So this this type <laughs> of gun, this would be too much powder for this small pistol. Yeah. It'd be okay on on a long gun, yeah. not on a short gun. You, you, but we could use this. We put the powder in there, and you dump it dump it in here. Uh, See how it fits down. Yeah. You dump that in there like that. And then you got a patch and a, and a ball. Which, which I don't I have, have a any. patch on me, but it's I don't in, either. I didn't there. bring but it. My well, frock coat that I've worn, you can cut that off and put that around the ball. And then you take this thing here. This is called a short starter. Okay. okay. Then you would have that ball up there. You take this, the short starter. You put that over the ball, and then you tap that into the gun like that. That mm -hmm. gets it started. Because if you if you're using the ramrod, which I'll show you in a second, then you, you have yeah. a chance of it's wood. You can break it, and of course it goes into your hand. Oh, okay. So you don't want to do that. So you use a short starter, and the other end of the short starter, you drive that ball down into wherever that ends right there. Wow. And then you take the ramrod. So you got all this stuff going on. You oh take my. the ramrod. Every time you want to fire the gun, you have well, to do that. Well, if you had the time to do all that. Right. Time. And otherwise, you, would... you poured powder in from the horn, and you right. spit the ball down the barrel, and Bump it and then fire. Right. Okay. So then you got to drive the ball down with this all the way to the bottom where it bottoms out down in the bottom. So this of the is gun. the proper way to do it, but yeah. probably not the if, most efficient way to well, do it. Well, if, if you're if you're shooting targets. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you're not, not in a hurry, that's that's fine. You replace that. If you're back. in a gunfight, you do it the other way, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. Your prison's going to be open like this. Remember, there's a flint that goes on here. It's not on here. Yeah. Then you have to take this like one of these and it has a real fine powder that you would dump into the pan okay okay just a few sprinkles of that then you close the frizzin this way then your of course your hammer's already going to be cocked back i can do that It'll be half cocked to start that's half cocked there's two cocks here. yeah that's full cock. Oh. full cock for firing half cock for loading you close the frizzin then you pull the hammer all the way back and now you can shoot the gun Okay. Okay. 20 and minutes if everything later. goes right and you're on outside this morning where you got all that beautiful 
precipitation coming down, uh -huh. it'll probably go off. You know, probably, but maybe. You don't know that for sure. Because it's wet. It's wet. Okay. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. And, of course, it, once you fire this, as soon as that hammer and, and the flint strikes that prison, it'll push it forward like that, so then it's ready to reload again. So then you can do it again. Yeah. So, okay, how much time, if you're really good at it and you're, you know, in that time period and this is how you actually live day to day, does it take to fire a gun? Like well, to there's, get a there's documented three rounds a minute. Wow. That'd be fast. Yeah. Documented. Three rounds a minute. Yeah. You know, I couldn't I could do, do it, it. but yeah. I mean, without yeah. lots of practice. But, yeah. But your life depends. You got to remember your life would depend on this stuff. So well, so you either different. panic and drop it or you figure yeah. out how to do it real fast. Possibility. <laughs> gotcha. Anything's possible. but So yeah. then the horns that you have over there are to hold mm -hmm. the powder. That's the, okay. you know, the main powder chart, gotcha. your main powder. And these flat horns are priming horns. And uh, nice artwork on them. So this is all stuff that you can find this weekend out at Canner's Cave yep. to buy. Yep. Or to just see. I mean, if you yeah. just want to learn about it, about the look how pretty those are. What are those made out of? Horn horns. They like, take them, flatten them, they yeah. boil them, cow and horns. Boil, boil them and, and then flatten. Oh, I, that's why I would guess mm -hmm. I was wondering how they. Yeah, they're they boil flat. them. They're not round. Yeah, you know, they boil them. Okay. You can find them antelope. Anything that has horns. Okay. Yeah, not not antlers. Like you won't find them much. Not, well, not you, the you, they do. They do. Well, you can you bore them out. You can use antler, but mostly it's horn, looks like that. Like yeah. Larry said, gotcha. they heat that up and you flatten, you flatten those them things out, out. scrape them, and then, and then they carve. They and then carve some, them. yeah, somebody that has the skills carves all kinds <coughs> of stuff. <coughs> yeah. And then you got like see on this bag, these are buttons that you'd find out there. These are deer antler. This this. Okay, the buttons are yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you want what to show is, me the horns? What does that say? Well, he's going to have to tell you. I can't even hardly read. I can't barely see it. But This says join or die. His, his horn. Oh, his didn't, horn. Didn't put, okay. his name, didn't put my name on that. Oh. Uh, it would be like Larry's orange, his horn. That, boy, boy. I got you. This says join or die on it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's kind of neat, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, look at those. They have um, like maps on them, don't they? Or yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool stuff. So, <clears throat> Larry Zorns, um, you actually live in the area, but you sell um, muzzle loader parts. You actually create them and make them, and then people can put guns together themselves, yep. like you said, with a kit and all right. of that. Yeah, I and mean, we've sold basically all over the world mm -hmm. that's wild we have that's cool. uh, new zealand and uh, austria uh, switzerland how do you Sweden. get those suckers through customs <laughs> how do you explain well, that you, 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 you got uh, you got big long form you got to fill out i'll bet <laughs> yeah and i prefer not to do it anymore it just uh yeah seems like more hassle than what it's more worth. more hassle yeah. than what it's worth yeah and uh and we do neighbors to the north that sell some to Canada, but uh, not not so much lately. But uh, we've uh, we've like you said, we've sold all over the world, and it's kind of neat that people uh, want to buy your product from, from other countries. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And it's yeah. still a pretty huge business. Yeah. yeah, believe it, it really is. That's just one person. I mean, there's still there's places that sell these all over the country. You know? How do people find you? Very carefully. Very carefully. <laughs> Through that muzzle loader magazine we were talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, loader magazine. <laughs> yeah. And all the shows that mm -hmm. uh, I used to do. Okay. I, I've, I've quit traveling so much anymore. Kind of word of mouth now, probably. Yeah, it is. And uh, or people tell me they got me on the internet and all that, and I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know you were there, did no, you? No, <laughs> I didn't know I was there. But uh, it, it's nice that... that uh, People like our products, and we we want to make them right. So that's what we do. And if there's a problem, we take care of it. Yeah. And, uh, these two guns here, we've got uh, the first one up there is uh, was made by is a copy of an original gun 
It was made by Albrecht in uh, Moravian Village in Bethlehem, PA in 1742. Wow. He made it for Poxanosa. Poxanosa was a hereditary chief of the Piquisep of the Shawnee tribe. The old Indian ordered that gun, made the way he wanted it, and uh, he carried it for nine years. He died at the age of 91. Wow. Uh, yeah, and uh, we, we had the privilege of copying the gun. I made the copied the lock externally. That lock is the same as what the one on his, his gun. Uh, internally, I use it parts that we already had, uh, but uh, we copied the the, the outside. trigger. Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah. The whole the whole pattern we copied, mm -hmm. yeah. barrel and everything is copied as per the original. That is amazing. And the second one here is uh, uh, Andrew Verner. It uh, was he was building about 1730 in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and uh, we copied. We copied that, uh, made the molds, did the engraving on the molds, and uh, and uh, it's got engraving on the butt plate and the trigger guard and the side plate on that one. The Indian gun had an engraving on it, but I opted not to do that because some people want to do their own thing. So Sure. So, uh, so it, I can tell that the woods are completely different on both of those guns. What yeah. what are they made from? Okay, the Indian gun is walnut. It was made of walnut. Okay. Uh, we chose to do this one. This is one of a kind. Basically, it's curly cherry. Yeah, I knew it was it, curly something. Yeah, it's it has curly cherry. It's and so it, pretty. It, it, it's, it's, it's really rare. I don't know if there's another piece in existence, but uh, it, it, uh, uh, Paul Hall, Red Brush Stocks, had that piece of wood, and I got it from him. And uh, it, well, he carved he carved the stocks in, in rough, and then we finish them off. Okay. So uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, both of them well, are. And it, it, it's you know, all of our, the barrels we buy, of course, but uh, all of the uh, all the hardware stuff is our own manufacture. Mm -hmm. so, um, we've sold them all over the world. So I'm, I'm tickled to death that, that it's happened. You know? Yeah, that's and, so cool. You know, the only other one of those that I've seen in the Curly Cherry was the one that I built for, used to be my old boss when I first started in Fort Shooting Sports, and I made it for him for a retirement gift. Oh, and it's it's a curly well, tree. You I got it from Paul. I got it from Paul. Well, uh, he's the only one that had any. So yeah, that's yeah. been oh I don't know, almost twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. wild. Yeah. Such a pretty piece of wood. So, um, are these guns for sale, or are do you have? They're yours. Yeah, they're for sale. Well, okay. This one, I'm not sure I want to sell it. But I priced it at three thousand dollars. I figured nobody would buy it. So. <laughs> <laughs> So you just better you watch just what you told wish everybody. For. Yeah, I, I know, I know. But uh, yeah, uh, I haven't pushed it real hard. So. so do the guns vary in prices depending on like the quality of wood and right whether they're brass or whether they're iron mounted. Okay. Uh, whether they're smooth bore or whether they're rifle barrels because the rifle barrels are a little are a little more expensive. Okay. Because of the extra work goes into rifling, but. Uh, but you know, and it depends whether it's a oxygen to round straight straight barrel or if it's a swamp barrel, which they start out and they flare out. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of vari vari a lot of variation. To gotcha. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> these guns are because of their nature and their you know replicas of of guns from a long time ago. There's not. It's, this isn't like you go to the gun store and buy a. Current no, gun with they're, background they're not, checks. They're and all, not regulated. All of that stuff. Yeah, Just because they're. Because they are reproductions of. Yes. Of historic. Yeah, and they're historic, all hand yeah. done. They're not. Yeah. They're not. I mean, man, they're not production guns. They're for me, they're. One at a time. Handmade. For lack of better words, they're art. Yes. Yeah. I mean, really they are. Good, yeah, they're they're, they're are. pieces yeah. of art. They are art. Well, yeah. that's, that's like these horns and things. That's artwork. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so. 100%. No, it, it's kind of neat. So what will be <clears throat> some of the things that our viewers, when they come out this weekend to Cantor's Cave, um, what will be some of the other things that they could probably purchase? Like, you know, I'm not into a muzzle loading, and I don't huh? need an axe, right. but Glass. I would like to buy something. Glassware, for one. They're, Bottles. Oh. Glassware. Uh, like you had China. the wooden bowls. Yeah, there's China. There'll be they real got China some China. There. Neat, neat China. And, Beads. Uh, 
books, uh, food, children's toys, some children's and toys, books, uh, cool, yeah, uh, colonial children's toys, yeah, colonial yeah. type, uh, yeah. uh, clothing. They got different different mm-hmm. stuff, but uh, but it mostly uh, deals with the colonial period. Okay, and uh, let's see what else, Larry. Well, and there's a lot of parts too, like yeah, folks that have maybe have. I don't know. Great great granddad's muzzle loader. It might be some original from somewhere. <coughs> there's guys that will have parts that might fit that. Oh, okay. You know, there's yeah, a lot of parts, like little carried, boxes carried parts, of parts, all parts kinds of pieces. parts from old, old guns. Some are old, yeah. some are new. That's awesome. Yeah. Roger Shrek. To get it to working yeah. again, you know, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of that too. Flint, you know, people sell all kinds of flint for guns and flint for striking, and flint for fire making. Okay. That um, kind of thing. I'm sure blacksmiths and... Uh, yeah. They're blacksmith usually stuff. we have a blacksmith there. And we got, uh, stuff. Guy, blacksmith, blacksmith stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah, Ed Anderson usually got a lot of beaded yeah. knife, knife sheaths and mm-hmm. and uh, all, all different kind of knife knife products. Yeah. I'll put it like okay. that. You could find flatware. So maybe some old, some of it's silver, you know, like old flatware. That oh, neat. People seem to... Don't need any more kind of a thing, and it'll be the real yeah. deal stuff. You'll find that kind yeah. of thing too. Yeah. Occasionally, we run across some silver stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's awesome. Seen it there many times. And you said there's going to be how jewelry. Many vendors there'll out be there? some jewelry. About there twenty eight vendors. Twenty eight vendors. Yeah. I like jewelry. Yeah, there'll be jewelry there. Yeah. Okay. Beads, the, that that type of stuff. The people's into that too. Very um, very cool. Leather, so, you know, different types of all kinds of leather for different things. Would this be an appropriate place to bring children? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very definitely. Cool. Mm-hmm. My granddaughter grew up with me doing rendezvous and all this stuff, and uh, and uh, the great grandchildren are coming out. You know, they uh, they are excited about it, and my great granddaughter, a dress that I had made, a buckskin dress for my granddaughter, a years ago. And uh, my other granddaughter wore it then when she was out of rendezvous and now my great granddaughter wants me to wants to wear it and i don't know where it's at <laughs> <laughs> you better find it yeah i know you're gonna be I know. in trouble and she I, wants to wear it i think one of the other ones we forget too to say sometimes furniture because we have a guy oh. that we call him the box maker yeah box maker he yeah he makes all kinds of cha- chests and trunks and oh. furniture chairs those kind of things boxes yeah. of all different cool. descriptions yep. that people store stuff in and uh Chairs that they sit out, like Adirondack chairs, you know, made of uh, made, uh, more frontier I style, but they're what, still the same thing. Bill, Re- what Bill Reynolds, he, he comes from up in Marietta area. I'm trying to think what he brought down. I don't remember. Mm, don't oh, well, either. he'll be there. But, okay. Yeah, so there, there's, the, the whole point I, is come out because there's something for everybody. Well, the other so the, fun. The, the main point is to come out and support the 4 H camp. Yes. Uh, all that, all those funds, the gate receipts. Go to the 4-H, 100% of that, and then the, our club, the Sons of Liberty, we donate uh, a percentage of the table rental to the 4-H yes. camp. And then we donate enough to send one kid to shooting ed camp. That's awesome. Pays yeah. their tuition. Very good. Yeah. So, um, okay, let's talk about hours and days and all that stuff this weekend. There you go. I'm, I'm staying out of that. Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> well, it, it, it's been kind of – but. Uh, Eight to six on Saturday and eight to three on Sunday. Okay. And uh, how much to get in? Well, he said he yeah. changed it. <laughs> they don't for, know. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Well, well, we, well, it's either three or four dollars to get in. We didn't. Uh, we didn't. It's we not didn't much. coordinate on this. Yeah, it's three or four dollars. Uh, three or four dollars. If a dollar is going to break you up, I don't guess you need to come anyhow. But mm-hmm. uh, uh, and uh, if you're in period dress, it's a it's a dollar cheaper. Okay. And kids are twelve and under are free. Okay, there you go. So, so not not a very pricey. Uh, no, it's not going to going to break anybody up. That's right. So I should be free then, because mentally huh? I'm under twelve. Do what? <laughs> it's not mentally; it's your physical oh. age. Sorry. Oh, oh, nice yeah, try. Yeah, well, really. you're, See, out, you're out of luck. <laughs> I'm out of luck. I got it. So, um, Sons of Liberty, are you guys taking new members and all that stuff, or? Yeah, I think sure. well, they'll take new members anytime. Okay. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you do that? See Norm uh, Norm Garinger, he uh, or, or his Tracy. wife mm-hmm. Tracy. Uh, they're the club uh, president and treasurer. So okay. They take care of that, 
And they're uh, usually at registration when you come in. There. Yeah, they, they're to the the they're at the cool. entrance. If not, just ask somebody. We'll find them. They'll yeah, be there. Somewhere. Not a big deal. And then you said that there's actually rooms available to stay out at Candor's Cave, and I didn't mm. know that at um, the uh, at the uh, uh, dorm down there. There's uh, rooms available down there, and, and some up on the hill, new facility up behind the the main lodge. Oh, okay. And uh, it's uh, I guess. Uh, you had to get a hold of Lisa out there. She's a camp Lisa director. Lisa Warren. She's been here yeah. on the show before. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know the, for the uh, for the people who are going to be set up out there, she said sixteen dollars a night uh, per person. So, which is not unreasonable, uh, I don't think. And it, it goes to the four H camp. Yeah, it goes yeah. to the four H camp. So, Good so stuff. Nobody should be griping about that. I don't no. think. Not at all. All right. Well, this has been so fun and cool. Um, and you guys, thank you for bringing show and tell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love yeah. it. I have to feel how sharp it is. It's pretty sharp. That's yes, pretty it sharp. is. Yeah. It works. Dylan's not. You should be way more afraid of me having this in my hand yeah, than is. you. <laughs> He's like, she's not. She gonna might not it. be joking. <laughs> <laughs> if it goes. Mm, sticks right here beside your ear. Well, I suppose you have enough room in here. You can set up. <laughs> we can do X throwing. Yeah, yeah. You could have somebody demonstrate that for you. We'll probably have to put up a piece stuff. of plywood or something. Just some targets. Yeah, yeah. yeah we just the drywall probably wouldn't. That'll be wouldn't your next, enjoy it. Too be much. next venture for your show. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you guys can come back in and teach yeah. me how to throw an axe. Okay, we can do that. Do that. Yeah. Or come out to Canter's Cave. We'll teach you out there. Yeah. We should do that sometime. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because James yeah, went and did throw, axe throwing. Yeah, those throw really good. Yeah, they do. They do. Now, I can't believe some of the, some of the cities I've been in, and they have. I mean, it's it's kind they of have expensive. axe throwing competition. Yeah, it's very expensive. There's one in you know, there's one in Chillicothe. I know Hawking Hills has some. Yeah, we do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> we just do it for you fun. Have a, you don't have a full bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the whole. That's the difference. I'm like, I'm still not understanding this whole axe throwing thing where they encourage people to bring alcohol. Cool. Well, I used to do demonstrations <laughs> up in uh, up in Dayton when we were doing a show up there, uh, an outdoor event, and I'd take two of those and throw them and stick them both but, at the same time. Yeah. With one hand. Yeah. Put one here and one here, and and throw them both. I so so James, we could be ringers. We need to go. <laughs> we need to go hustle some people. We'll have the Larrys teach us, and then we'll oh, go man. to one of those axe throwing places and hustle people. I've got a lot to learn to get to the point that I can hustle. <laughs> well, I can furnish axes at a reasonable cost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, can anybody be taught to throw an axe, even if we're uncoordinated? Or well, I I would think so. I don't yeah. see why you couldn't. Is it's there a, a technique There's involved? a question of swinging your arm back and... Uh, there kind of is. Yeah. Yeah? But yeah, sure. That's what the Larrys can teach us. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That would uh, be fun. I think we'd have to brush up a little bit before we started here. doing that. <laughs> they last, don't trust me well, anymore. I did, I did this... Sorry about that. I did this last year. I, for the kids, we always have to demonstrate and show them how to do it. So. That's awesome. So. Nope, the Larrys are taking their axes. Once, they don't once trust a year, us. I guess. You know. Yeah. But, they will leave me with a back scratcher, though. Somebody brought me this because I was whining that my back always itches. There you go. So it works. Might find one of those out there, too. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, is there anything else you want to tell our viewers? we got a few minutes left. No. <coughs> Other than just come out and see I'm about, us. And, I'm about uh, talked out. <laughs> the, weather, the weather sounds like it's going to It might be wet, but it sounds like it's going to be, like gonna be hey, good. If so. there's no ice storm, that's like a plus. But, in our plus, eyes, right? Yeah, <laughs> but I can't stress enough that it's come out to, and if nothing else to support the 4-H camp. That's right. Right. And, yep. of course, they have food there in the cafeteria. will be open. Yeah, they've got to yeah. have yeah. hot the dogs. On, it's going all day long, basically. That kind of stuff. Brats, hot dogs, I think fries, that kind of thing. I don't know what all they're going to have, but, yeah, yeah you got to feed the troops. you got to um, feed the troops. Yeah. yeah, you sure do. You can't yeah. let them go hungry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. And there are some tables there to sit around. And 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 we try to and keep the fire going at the fireplace. So yeah. It's That's a beautiful it, fireplace yeah, it's out not, there. Yeah. What, um, when are your, so you guys do this, this in the winter, but then mm-hmm. you have these rendezvous things. Uh, um, you're not doing one right now, are no, you? No, Memorial Day, Memorial Day and okay. Labor Day. 
Maybe. And they're out across from Canner's Cave, right? Yeah. Well, no, they're on, yeah. Yeah. Is that still property? They're on the Kenner's? property. Okay. They're, instead of making a left going into the main lodge, you make, you make a right, right. Okay. go down to the field. That field. Yeah. yeah, and you guys have like a just, it's like a, lack of better words, camp out. Primitive <laughs> camping. Yeah, yeah. That's primitive what it is. camping you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get to camp. Uh, flint and steel, you know, and that kind of thing, yeah. 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 And they, they have, have a shoot. They, shoot. They, they and do they have axe throwing. Axe throwing. James, archery. we're in <laughs> primitive archery. You know they have that too. Oh, really? That uh -huh. would be fun. Yeah. Can you teach us how to do all that? Yes, you uh, can. Yeah, I could. Yeah. Will you teach us how like to do? That? Yes, you will. <laughs> it's only a weekend here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we would attempt to do it. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Are you still doing some of the shooting things out at the camp? Yes. Yes, he is. Okay. Mm -hmm. He hasn't retired yet, and he, they're not going to well, let I'm him retire. I was going to say they're not going to let him retire. I still, I'm still volunteer. He, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah sure. Cut the grass and do all those kind of he's, things. Because he's a good dude. I, I he's give done. up yeah, doing the plumbing work. He I retarded. don't do commodes anymore and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's, a, that's somebody else's job. <laughs> yeah, he's retarded. Oh, yeah, no. right. <laughs> <laughs> all right well guys get out of here and okay. we appreciate y'all well, uh, being so here for, for the day yeah thank, thank you Jennifer. it's been we a lot of thank fun you talking much. with you yeah and uh get out check out this um trade fair this weekend mm -hmm. and uh it will be a really good time yep yep it'll yep. be a good time be and great to you. see you out there appreciate yeah. it. see if uh see if there isn't something out there that thanks you like. for the oh. channel for having us on we really appreciate oh well that, thanks so. for hanging with us we love you guys all right, so let's, uh, Dylan, you have that weather pulled up just so we can see what the heck is going on. So today, um, they're big fat liars because they're saying a 20% chance of rain. <laughs> I can promise you that it's more than that because it has been pouring all day. Um, <laughs> highs today, though, pretty good. 62 degrees and then lows of 36 because look at tomorrow where we go from 62 today to 37 degrees for a high tomorrow. A little bit of snow uh, flurries in the forecast depending on where where you are in our uh, – get the gun. Oh, yeah, just leave it. I'll take it. <laughs> um, and then over the weekend, looking like a bit cooler um, with highs on Saturday, 42, highs on Sunday of 37, and uh, then beginning of your work week, 39 degrees uh, with some rain in the forecast. So what the heck? All right, James, now we need to conspire about, um, we need to conspire about how to throw axes. Those guys are characters, man. Aren't they fun? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to be able to make it out to their show this week. Never I've never been. gone. Yeah. But this weekend looks like a good time to go. Yes, it's going to be a wonderful weekend to go. I mean, it's not going to be a super warm out. What else do you have to do? Maybe raining. What else do you have to do? Uh, yeah. Get out to Canner's Cave. Number one, it's a beautiful facility. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful area. Yeah. I haven't been out there in a long time. I've been I've been looking for an excuse to go out there again. This is it. Yeah. I think this is it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's just a really, really fun – it's just something that gets you kind of outside of your box. It's just mm -hmm. not something that you see every day. Mm -hmm. So when you can go around and see all these different vendors and talk with them and mm -hmm. uh, get a little bit of history yeah, there. For, for as little as 3 or maybe $4. Three or $4. Dollars. <laughs> We're not sure which. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> when they came in, he's like, did you bring the flyer? No, I thought you brought the flyer. <laughs> I was like, did we print the flyers? No, I don't think so. <laughs> and he's like, well, who would know? Well, so-and-so would know. We'll call her. Why well, didn't I bring my phone? <laughs> They're like two old married couple or two old women bickering back and oh, forth. I don't That's know. They, they got a grumpy, grumpy old men vibe, I think. <laughs> They are funny. Yeah. Characters. Oh, hilarious. But uh, no, really good weekend um, to get out and about. Go check it out. Canner's Cave. Going to be a lot of fun. Should be. Yep. Yeah. So so what the heck, what the heck else is um, going on? Well, I'm here's a cool say. thing. Uh, so about around this time, maybe it was last year, maybe it was the year before last, we had uh, Nicole Regal in Jackson. Yes. And she did a little uh, like Q&A. And showed the movie that she directed called Holler at Tri-City Theater. Yes. So this Saturday, she's going to be at the Athena in Athens doing the same thing. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. So if you've not seen that movie, you should go check it out. It's it's a 
it is on Showtime. If you have the Showtime say, app, you can watch it. You can actually watch it on Showtime, mm-hmm. uh, which is so cool that it made it to Showtime. Yeah, like, but the, if you, those of you who don't know, Nicole Regal is uh, from, from Jackson, from graduated here. from Jackson High School. Yes. I'm, not, I'm not sure what year she graduated. She's, she's a little she's a couple, younger than me. Yeah, she's a few couple years older than me, I think. Um, but she, she made this movie that is shot here in Jackson and in Chillicothe. Uh, it's a really, it's a like a working class America story. It is. It's, it's like an ins- inspirational thing, mm-hmm. kind of like find, finding your place, finding like what your destiny is, uh, you know, whatever. It's But it's a really beautiful, yeah. beautiful movie, inspiring story. It is. Very well acted. Uh, you recognize Potentially recognize a couple Numerous of the faces in, in it. it. Yeah. And there's some local people in it as mm-hmm. well. Yeah, yeah, there's some <laughs> local people in it too. Uh, but yeah, so if you've not seen it, it is showing at the Athena in Athens yes. this Saturday. And Nicole will be there to talk about the film a little bit. Um, and, you know, if you can't make it, it, it is available on demand, at least on Showtime. I think you can probably rent it online too. But it's really cool to go see it in person and get mm-hmm. to meet Nicole and... You know, yeah. she grew up in this area, so you know. I think um, there was there were some folks that were like, "Wait a minute, it's kind of like being derogatory toward our area." And I'm like, "No, it's not. It's mm-hmm. not at all being yeah. derogatory and toward it, our and area." And it is like it's the movie being, shot in Jackson, and the town in the movie is called Jackson, but it is a fictional place. Like yes. it's like it's not like a historical movie. No, know? and this isn't about a, an actual person mm-hmm. or whatever. It's just. It's situations that people in our area could certainly find mm-hmm. themselves in, and how do you get out of it, or mm-hmm. choose to get out of it, or yeah. do better, or, or do worse, yeah. or or get you like have choices, su- or get sucked into it. Yeah, and I think it's it's about that. It's about mm-hmm. overcoming, you know, certain yeah. stigmas and and things. So it's a beautiful mm-hmm. movie. You're mm-hmm. right. Um, and Nicole is lovely. Yeah, and Love it's worth her. and it's worth seeing on the big screen. Yes. Yeah. It absolutely is. So very, very cool. All oh. right. Good to have her back in the area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She stops by occasionally. Mm-hmm. So now I don't have the restaurant. I don't get to see her much anymore. <laughs> but maybe we'll have to make a special trip. All right. Got to get out of here for the day. Tomorrow, I assume, we'll be doing some news. That's right. Woohoo! And um, so enjoy the uh, rain today. If you're a duck, you'll be very, very happy about that. And ducks eat free at Subway, so go see Dylan. Yeah. Didn't you know that, Dylan? No, I did not. Oh. <laughs> Didn't you get that memo? Yeah. Duck seat free at Subway. Interesting. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, I don't get your reference. No. Even though I have told him this joke before. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> have a great day, everybody. We'll be back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye, guys. This just in. The Telegram News has a new website. TheTelegramNews.com. Same dedicated coverage. Same trustworthy news with a brand new look. Covering Jackson and Benton counties and surrounding areas. Locally owned and operated, TheTelegramNews.com has its finger on the pulse of the community. Stay up to date on local events, high school sports, and breaking news. TheTelegramNews.com. Subscribe today at TheTelegramNews.com. Check it out.